Welcome back to Up North at Four. And joining us now, we have some very, very special guests. We have Ivan, Yulia, and Brett joining us. Uh, Ivan and Yulia coming all the way from Dnipro, Ukraine. I right. nailed the, the home city, right? That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are joining us from Ukraine, uh, obviously escaping the war that broke out a few years ago. And you're here now living in Wisconsin, living with Brett and his wife in Landa Lakes. And I feel like I need to start, though, from the beginning. For the two of you, what was life like before the war? What was life like in Dnipro for the two of you? Actually, we were living in one million city. Okay. Uh, it's a big city, mm -hmm. big city life. Uh, we, we liked living there and uh, we had, I think, very good life yeah. with our families. Uh, we had good jobs there yeah. and uh, we had good, uh, pre pretty good salaries and we had a lot of plans uh, there. We wanted to sell uh, uh, we wanted to have a uh, house uh, in the future on the west of Ukraine, uh, closer to nature, and uh, yes, and uh, we wanted to make wedding there. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, he proposed war. me before war, and uh, oh. we, would, uh, we were planning a wedding, but uh, for now it's, it still <laughs> didn't happen. And it's important but to note, like, like America in Ukraine before the war, people like yourselves, you had dreams, and you yeah. can make Make those dreams come true. Uh, what people don't always know is Ukraine is a democracy since 1996, a democracy, right? Yeah. And then everything changed with the war, right? And your plans got spoiled. Yes. Yeah. And so, what was what was the deciding factor to move to the U.S.? Actually, uh, we left Ukraine uh, a year ago. In the first day of in war. In the first day of war. Okay. Yeah, and uh, we were in Poland, and uh, just in the beginning of the war, we understood that it will be a long-term war. Mm -hmm. We were thinking it was our opinion, and uh, we just understood that we have to find some new country to start everything from scratch. Yeah. So during all last year we were searching for some country but we were we knew english a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, we heard a lot of good things about the usa and we were considering uh, actually uh, canada and uh, the usa mm -hmm. uh, because canada has a good program mm -hmm. uh, for ukrainians too but in the end we decided that uh, we need to, to get some possibilities to help ukrainians to ukraine and uh, we knew that we can get good uh, jobs uh, here like it specialists a good salary and we will be able to provide uh, for our families and to Ukrainians to donate because now it's very important to donate money uh, to people in uh, Ukraine. Uh, before the war, 36 million people lived in Ukraine. By all accounts, uh, you know, that number is cut in half now. So obviously, Brett, hi Brett, uh, you, you probably heard of a need of people trying to get out of Ukraine and you put your name in that hat. How come? I did. Uh, well, when the war broke out, I just saw it as the biggest atrocity and as I've looked at uh, like, what can I do? What can I do to help? I'm in the middle of northern Wisconsin, and I'm not going to be able to, you know, drive my car over there and pick them up. So mm -hmm. we, uh, I searched Google uh, and looked for different platforms of ways to sponsor a way to get, you know, refugees to the United States. Uh, our last child had graduated from, was a verge of graduating from college. We had an empty house other than my wife and I, and we had a couple of dogs looking for a glove down. <laughs> and uh, I decided that this was the time for us to act. And so it began. I couldn't have asked. I've, I've, I've got more out of this than they probably have. I, my, I'm a, probably tear up. <laughs> it's, it's been a very wonderful, beyond wonderful experience. Uh, Ely and Ivan have pretty much taken on their own as far as being able to uh, search for work over here. And we've you know, helped them along the way any way, shape, or form we can. And uh, they've become a part of our family. From being empty nesters, your, your, you and your wife, to now hosting Ivan and Julio, and there was no hesitation None. on your part. None. 
I think the most yeah, home you, know, <laughs> you know, you lean Ivan, when you look at, you know, um, Brett behind you, what do you have to say to him? We are, we really appreciate everything that you've done for us. And uh, it's really, it means a lot for us. And we are very grateful to you and Frisk. You're right here. <laughs> <laughs> and like Brett mentioned, uh, his last words that uh, we became like part of family, and uh, this is the right uh, feeling uh, feelings that uh, really we have. Uh, we feel in uh, us like at home, uh, like with yeah. family, and uh, it's like your second family in the USA. And for now, we don't have possibility to come to Ukraine uh, because we will lose all our uh, documents, everything that we got here so we will not able to see our parents for long term and uh, now we got new family and yeah. yes and we are feeling it like it's not fake it's in, yeah. actually for now uh, Brett and Frisk they are the closest people for us here in the USA yeah and it, it, it will be always uh, only these people will be always for us people that help it to, uh, to us uh, to make our first uh, the first most difficult steps. steps in the USA yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I was going to say too because you've been away from your families and your friends back home and you know on top of that there's a war going on as well right yeah. there's yeah. so many things I'm sure top of mind for the two of you um, going on back in your home country but just what does that mean to you guys to have Brett and Frisk open up their homes open up their hearts their arms and just provide a safe space, a, a, a haven for the two of you. What's yeah. that been like? Yeah. Um, actually, I was uh, shocked uh, of uh, how they're helpful. And actually, they and their friends and most people they we saw in USA, they were so helpful. We didn't expect this. Actually, when we were arriving, we were thinking maybe we have to do most things by ourselves, how to find out how to do this, or uh, to make some documents, I don't know, to uh, pass uh, exams for driving license, or all of this stuff to prepare. And uh, they helped with all stuff that we had, and it was really unexpected. And we, we were shocked, uh, just it was cultural shock for us because right. we really have mental differences between Ukrainians. Between it's cultural differences. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's really different and it's unusual how Americans are uh, helpful and uh, Americans very uh, different in uh, depend on part of USA and yeah, here, like why, why we stayed here in the uh, middle, we, we were in different states in uh, New York Massachusetts east, and uh, yeah, mostly on east and uh, in the end we decided to stay uh, here because people are different and so helpful and uh, and we, we we feel this warm from people uh, because uh, yeah. uh, they will hug you uh, they will not do it in New York or in, <laughs> in Boston no here in Wisconsin it's I don't know that's that's a really good feeling to yeah. be here it's like on the north of USA but it's very warm here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And Ivan, you, you mentioned your family. Obviously, you made the hard decision to leave them back yes. in Ukraine. Uh, if they're watching you right now, what do you have to say to them? Uh, I will say that uh, uh, of course, I miss uh, everyone, uh, but I will do my best. Uh, I will not. I decided uh, not to stay in Poland and just wait when the war will end. And uh, I moved. To, we decided to move uh, to USA, not just for us, but for uh, our families, for uh, Ukraine, and uh, we will try uh, our best. We will do everything that we can uh, to uh, help. Firstly, our families. So that and the Ukrainians, Ukraine, and we will not just sit and we will not sit until the war will not uh, finished. So, so my family, everyone, you can be confident that uh, we will do a lot and I promise it. 
been able to stay in touch somewhat, right, with your family and friends uh, yeah. back home. What have they been telling you about what's what's happening back in Ukraine? Uh, actually, uh, there are a lot of information every yeah. day. Like you maybe heard about Kherson Dam, which mm -hmm, happened mm -hmm. yeah, uh, recently. And uh, we have uh, our most, our families in Dnipro city there now, uh, but also we have friends in Bakhmut area. So news are different from all, both of these parts. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, they're still bombing and uh, actually the war is going on and uh, you know like uh, these days uh, uh, are harder than it was like a month ago because we guess it's connected to uh, counter-offensives that Ukraine plans to do uh, and um, for now the situation is Tough. Yeah. Tough. yeah, yeah. There's, uh, you know, of course, information coming out of Ukraine every day via news organizations, and you know, Russia seems to be targeting, strategically targeting infrastructure um, yes. in Kiev and other areas across that the country. You know, I, I guess, like, my question is: Do your friends and family there? It's a war zone. Do they feel like they're in a spot where they're safe, or is that feeling completely gone right now? Uh, they're in one, uh, 100 miles from the battlefield. Uh, uh, for now, they're in safe from uh, Russian troops uh, because uh, our army very uh, strong, very brave, and uh, we can be confident that they will not uh, lose our territory just w very fast. It will not be very fast. So we have uh, pretty big distance, and uh, the, the most uh, biggest uh, dangerous uh, for now, not only for Dnipro but for areas, uh, for all cities in the Ukraine. This the rockets because uh, it's every time it's just a random you can't predict where a rocket will uh, fall down and uh, for example in the January my brother was walking uh, just was walking uh, near street and uh, some rocket fall down uh, in the huge uh, house uh, nine fl uh, nine floors uh, house with apartments and all house was uh, underground and uh, wow. it was on his eyes and uh, you can't predict such things you, you you can be there and uh, just it's random so and you can do nothing you can do nothing with it and you can just praise the, that you will not be uh, next uh, next yeah yes. yeah and I think a lot of times too for us here in America you know we know the wars going on we see images we see video on television right yeah, but yeah. America we've never lived through a war there hasn't been a, a war on US territory in civil war the right. civil war so you're going back almost 200 years now and I think there is a bit of a maybe a detachment if that's the best word to use for kind of what I think a lot of Americans see versus what's happening mm -hmm. in Ukraine and I kind of want to ask you this uh, Brett because obviously you saw a need for people coming over from Ukraine, mm -hmm. you and your wife opened up your home. This is front of mind for the two of you and your family, I'm sure. And I guess from your perspective, being you know a couple that lives in Land O'Lakes in Northern Wisconsin, you're almost as far away from the actual wars that can get, but I guess what message would you want to share to people who maybe aren't realizing how serious this is over in Ukraine? Yeah, the news stations and so on, they can get a little bit of perspective of stuff as far as the bombings. Yeah. But the personal aspect of the families broken up and all that kind of stuff that goes along with the atrocity of a war and having your, your whole entire life disrupted from the families to the country to pretty much everything that we enjoy as Americans. Uh, everything destroyed in a matter of, you know, seconds, basically, when, when the Russians invaded. So, I mean, as far as telling people what, uh, there's, it's been very personal because we get to experience with Yulia and Ivan a lot of stuff that's going on with their families. And it's not the news stations that, you know, that bring this kind of stuff to us. It's the personal aspect of being able to talk to people in the Ukraine. I've been able to, 
associate and being on some FaceTime calls with the family. And, uh, you know, the United States has always been a melting pot. And this is the time, these, there's so many great people in Ukraine that are, their lives are completely disrupted. And they are more than willing and able to come here and start new lives and be able to help you know, the situation that we are faced with, with our own economies. Yeah, and in America, you know, a person who has um, come to light as a result of this conflict has been President Zelensky. Yeah. Um, it largely in the media, he's portrayed as someone who has rallied the Ukrainian people to fight back against the forces of Russia. Yeah. Um, do you see it that way? And do your friends see the same way? Back in Ukraine? Uh, actually, we really proud of Zelensky, mm -hmm. and uh, you know everyone were, was predicted uh, that uh, Russia will take Ukraine in 90 days. But thankfully to Zelensky, they didn't do this, and still they didn't grab Ukrainian territories, and. Um, Actually, we on, yeah, on, on the second day of the war, uh, uh, everyone uh, was saying that uh, that's all Russia will capture Kiev, Kiev and uh, that's all. And uh, U.S. proposed it, uh, to uh, evacuate Zelensky on the second day of the war, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure that you know that he declined this, this offer. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I need ammunition, I need weapons, and I will defend my country. Is, uh, my people. Uh, it was uh, the most important moment for the whole country after this day, after these words, uh, when he uh, made post uh, in the Instagram that uh, I'm here, I'm in Kiev, yes, Russians uh, tanks here too, mm -hmm. but we will uh, fight, we, uh, we will defend, and we will die if, it, if we will need. And uh, after it, the whole country was inspired by him, and uh, that's, why, that's why all Ukrainians mm -hmm. went, okay, we will fight, and and uh, we want to be uh, part of it. And uh, yes. And, and obviously a lot of Ukrainians sort of rallying around, you know, your president and, and the soldiers on the front lines as well. And I'm curious though, uh, for the two of you, what has it been like to see, not just from the US, but from people all over the world sort of lending their support, whether that's money, whether that's ammunition or, you know, things the soldiers will need or even just sort of sending their, their best, right? What has that meant for the two of you to kind of see the world sort of come together and, and throw their support behind your home country? Hmm. That's... that's uh, that's what not Ukraine need. It's uh, all countries need yeah. because uh, we are uh, uh, countries, USA, and the countries in Europe. They are spending just money. It's just money. You are spending weapons. It's just metal, iron. But we are spending our lives every day. Uh, blood of our people, Ukrainians people, not uh, Europeans. No. So we are spending the most uh, expensive things that can be in this life. It's lives and uh, I think that uh, of course we are uh, we are really thankful to everyone who helps uh, and uh, that's great but uh, everyone should understand that it's not our war when uh, Russia is the biggest country just in that has it ten times more uh, army he's attacking us it's not about just Ukraine it's about the whole Europe at uh, and uh, no, yeah. Nobody can stop this. It's the worst thing. Yeah. And no, uh, no, no, no. I would say one yeah. person yeah. can stop this. Yes, one person yeah. can. Yeah. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, the most imp uh, difficult thing that uh, that for now we have uh, we have money, we have weapons, but uh, Europe or uh, USA or other countries will not send their people to us. Mm -hmm. And our Ukrainians. Uh, one Ukrainian should kill uh, 10 Russians to win this war. Yeah. So, and uh, to, to change uh, this proportion, uh, we need more people, but we will not get them. So it's, it's the most difficult thing in this war because Russia trying to win this war because just of amount of people. They have 150 million people, we have now 25 million people.
that's, that's the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah, and that's why they want to prolong the, this war as much as possible. Yeah. Now, you're living with Brett in Land O'Lakes. Yeah. Um, when does that run out? What is the next step for you? Can you stay in Land O'Lakes forever? Do you have to keep applying for you know, permission to live in the U.S.? What is that process? Uh, actually, we're IT specialists, and uh, we will search uh, for a job. And actually, uh, now we are in process of searching, mm -hmm. and uh, it will depend on uh, the place where we find job or if we will find remote job uh, so probably we will be able to choose by ourselves the place for living yeah we, we open to, re to possible relocate if we will get some offer from another state uh, probably we could relocate from Wisconsin to this state for a job because we want to start earn money as uh, fast as possible uh, to uh, to start to help to donate to Ukraine to get because I, every day I'm. Uh, I get uh, messages from people that now fighting there, and uh, I when we need this thing, this thing, this thing, and now I can help. We don't have income, and uh, uh, we need. To, so we will not choose that uh, where we want to uh, work in this state or another state. No, where will be good offer, be good salary, we will go there, and uh, we will start to help Ukraine. That's all. Yeah, yeah. So the the plan is then to stay in America for as long as is necessary, right? And you were mentioning before too, you were living in a city of about a million people, yep. and then you come to yeah. Land O'Lakes, Wisconsin, <laughs> population uh, yes. 500 in the winter, 5,000. <laughs> so what is yeah, different? different. <laughs> Different, right? Than what you you guys are used to. Um, you mentioned before the the cultural shock of coming from Ukraine to America. Yeah. yeah. What's it like now? Do you feel a little more at home? Much better. <laughs> Much better than it was in the first days, because it was for us really hard to understand. Firstly, English. Ah, oh, right. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just we could understand uh, Ukrainian people who were speaking English, but to understand uh, Americans who are speaking English, mm -hmm. it it was a huge challenge for us. A little different, yeah. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people have different accents here. <laughs> and, uh, and our language was <laughs> terrible. We will not lie, it was terrible. Yeah. And when we uh, made first call with Breton Frisk, we just, we didn't understand uh, around 70% of our conversation. Just when uh, they were laughing, we were laughing too. Like, yes. what? Yeah, yeah. Something funny, sure. okay? We just like... You know, it, it was our uh, strategy for the first time everyone's laughing, we will laugh too. Okay. Yeah, okay. during the okay. dinners and everywhere. We were trying to be on the same page. Yeah, yeah. That's usually That's a good strategy, yeah. I've learned, right? Mm -hmm. I, but Brett, I'm curious, have you picked up a little Ukrainian over the, the over the time you've been with Ivan and Yulia? I actually have not learned any Ukrainian. Oh, really? Uh, okay. No, I've... Uh, I, they communicate with me very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say. And it's, it's a, it, it, there isn't that big of a difference here mm -hmm. as far as our communication skills and so on. I can teach them all kinds of, uh, <laughs> you know, bad German and that kind of stuff. <laughs> 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 I don't get into that, but uh, I also, you know, yeah, I've told them a lot of different jokes and so on. Oh, and we yeah. all laugh together and they... they Hopefully they won't be able to repeat these jokes. <laughs> right we'll, we'll maybe save that for, for off camera, right? Yeah. I want to ask you though, Ivan, because I heard uh, before we started doing this interview here that you've become the deer whisperer <laughs> up in Land O'Lakes. You name it me. <laughs> how, how did you become the deer whisperer? Just, I, I, I saw for it, 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 everything that is happening, it's huge contrast for us. We didn't see in our lives deer. We didn't see uh, wolves, bears, and uh, it's just it, everything what's happening. And when they left us uh, uh, first time in this house, in the first, they said, everything will be fine, everything will be fine. Yeah. But in the first night, bear came to our house. He started, he started to knock in, in our door. We just... <laughs> And we we had we had uh, his dogs. I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just 
Because this bear, it, it ru ruins all feeds, feeds, uh, bird feeders. Yeah. 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 yeah, he destroyed everything. And this well, I, uh, you know, I see, I see the smiles on your faces. I see the hope in your eyes. Oh my gosh, yeah. I see you making some really good decisions to, you know, make your life better. As you think back to your friends still in Ukraine or in Poland, right, who, you know, see you on this story that you're on. Yeah. And what do you have to say to them? Like, how do you, how do they make what you're doing happen? Mm -hmm. uh, those, it's just uh, for people who are staying in Poland uh, and uh, other European countries or not, uh, I would like to say that uh, we all should continue to help. Mm -hmm. Ukraine. We shouldn't stop. We should remind people all over the world that uh, since the war is still going on and uh, we, we have to do, we all have to gather and do our best to, to help uh, families and uh, to help our army because, uh, you know, uh, firstly we have to finish this war and then will be another time our country will be ruined and we will be, we should we should prepare to um, build it from uh, yeah. from scratch like uh, in a rain of weight uh, our country. Yeah, and you mentioned that now it's impossible for young men to leave Ukraine. You obviously did leave Ukraine. Do you ever think back and wish you hadn't? Or would you made decisions differently? Or do you think you made the right decision? Uh, I, w uh, I thought about it and I have now Tell the truth, I have only one best friend in my in my life, and now he is in Biting, uh, in Bakhmut, in Bakhmut, and he's fighting there. Of course, uh, I uh, had this feeling that I need to, to be with him, and I need to come. But uh, for one soldier, uh, for one Ukrainian soldiers, uh, soldier should be around ten people who will earn money and who will provide everything for this one soldier, mm -hmm. and someone uh, should earn this money, and. Uh, just uh, I didn't want uh, to be the person that are uh, gathering money inside of Ukraine from Ukrainians to help Ukrainians and it's a bad thing for our economy uh, and uh, just uh, we knew that we need to bring money from abroad from different countries to our economy and because now uh, some men and guys uh, Ukrainian volunteers they are gathering money uh, around from Ukrainians and it makes all Ukrainians uh, uh, more poor people than it was because they could spend this money on another thing. But when you're bring, uh, bringing money from abroad, it's another thing. You're boosting your uh, economy. If you really want to help Ukraine, to help Ukrainians, uh, you will try to find the way. And uh, we just, we found this way. We yeah. decided not to stay in Poland and just sit uh, when the war will end. We want to find jobs, find uh, salaries and donate, donate, donate. It's the most important thing now. You guys have been traveling and, and sharing your story uh, with people across America, across Wisconsin. Yeah. And what has that been like for the two of you just to kind of get your personal experience out there to the world and share it with people? And also what has sort of been the, the reaction from a lot of people? Mm -hmm. um, actually, sometimes it's really hard mm -hmm. uh, to remember all that stuff uh, that we cannot see our families during a long time. Me, I have, uh, I haven't seen them a smaller amount time than Ivan, but still it's hard for me because uh, we are very family people and um, we, we really, we were close, we were gathering on all holidays, you know, a big family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, we tell to people all our stories and uh, usually, usually uh, they uh, give this empathy uh, and uh, they try to feel uh, what we feel. 
And the two of you have a story to tell. You put a face to war in 2023. Um, and you, that story is an incredible one, right? It's an emotional one. There's a roller coaster in there of emotions, leaving family, leaving friends, wanting to make a better life for yourself, being forced to make decisions that you were never ready to make a couple of years ago and then yeah. going with it. And you're yes. doing that and you ended up here in central, north central Wisconsin. And, you know, obviously Nate and I, I think we will wish the best for you and on your travels and your endeavors and you know, where this journey takes you, right? Uh, which still isn't clear yet. There's still a war going on right now. You still have family and friends back in Ukraine. Uh, and there's still a lot of news that has to come out of Ukraine. Um, but it, it seems like the two of you have a pretty clear objective of what you want. And um, that's, that's uh, I, I applaud that because you, you obviously know the course that you're on. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you. And just know that we're going to be continually thinking about the two of you and your friends and your family back home and hopefully you know, they can make it out of this and then your country can make it out of this and then start to rebuild. It's a long process, mm -hmm. but I know by the end of it, when that happens, you know, I think the world will be a lot, a much better place. And, and Brett and Frisk, you as well, too, just opening up your home and your arms and I mean, that, that your hearts too. It's, it's incredible what you folks are doing as well. And you're changing lives, helping people out. And it's like Jeff said, it's very emotional. It's very heavy. And I'm almost trying not to, to tear up here over there, but there's been a lot of tears. Yeah. I can imagine there has been, and I appreciate but there's it. also been laughter. <laughs> and it's been, I'm sure it's been great for you as well. And I'm been, sure you've been, learned a ton. Very, very beyond reward. Yeah. And it's been incredible just sharing your story, hearing your story, and I cannot begin to thank the three of you guys enough to share this with our, our audience at home. In the meantime, though, we're going to take a break. We'll be back on Up North at 4.